Hello and welcome to Impact the Borough, a podcast from the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. I'm Brent Christensen, President and CEO of the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. Each week, a Chamber staff member will sit down with a guest to discuss what we're doing to start and grow businesses, create quality jobs, develop our workforce, and tell the inspiring story of Greensboro to the world. This podcast is brought to you by Truliant Federal Credit Union a modern, mission-driven financial institution focused on the needs of its members, the businesses it serves, and our community. With five locations in Guilford County, including a dedicated commercial lending office at Friendly Center and a highly rated mobile banking app, Truliant makes it their business to help you grow yours. Visit truliant.org for more information. Hi, everybody. This is Cecilia Thompson with Action Greensboro. A quick note before we get started. We recorded this episode in early February, long before the COVID-19 pandemic upended our lives. So the events, programs, and displays mentioned by our guests have now, unfortunately, been canceled. However, we think this episode is worth sharing with you anyway, to give you some insight into the role that Guilford County and Greensboro's women played in the suffrage movement, and to share all the hard work that the League of Women Voters and UNCG have been putting into honoring their legacy. Enjoy, and happy Women's History Month. All right. Well, I am really excited to be here today um, with my two friends, Catherine and Kathleen. And we're here and we have the honor and privilege of talking about Women's History Month and really celebrating not only um, a month that we can cherish every year, but the significance of 2020 being the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, allowing women to vote. And so I'm pleased to have um, Catherine and Kathleen here and would love for you guys to quickly introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. Well, my name is Kathleen McCarty-Smith, and I am um, the Interim Head of Special Collections and University Archives at UNC Greensboro. And I'm Catherine Maggot, a member of the League of Women Voters, Piedmont Triad, and a retired fashion designer. Well, welcome. I'm thank really you. glad to have this conversation with you. Greensboro is really well known for our role in the civil rights movement, and of course we're celebrating or have celebrated um, African American History Month in February, but now it's March and we have the opportunity to celebrate Women's History Month. So, Catherine, can you tell us a little about what you're doing with the League of Women Voters uh, all year round to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment? We'd love to talk about that. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, securing for women the right to vote. And it's the 100th anniversary of the founding of the League of Women Voters North Carolina. So in recognition of these historic occasions, the League of Women Voters of North Carolina and the Piedmont Triad have created Project 2020, a committee to engage, inform, and commemorate the 19th Amendment. And our logo and theme is Women Voting America Changing 1920 to 2020. So when you look at our logo, it looks like this, there is a yellow rose in the center of it, and everyone has asked, why a yellow rose? So the yellow rose was worn in public by women suffrage supporters. During the fight to ratify the 19th Amendment, it was the symbol of their victory. And to bring awareness of this historic symbol, the League of Women Voters, of Piedmont Triad has created this women's suffrage yellow rose garden made with solar-powered artificial yellow roses. I was the one who came up with the idea, and the garden goes with me everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) The garden will appear at various locations across the triad, and it illuminates at night. So it's been very, very well received. And so far, it has been in front of the History Museum, in December during the Smithsonian exhibit, American Democracy, A Great Leap of Faith. Um, The exhibit is still on. It's been inside Triad Stage at Salem College, in front of Rachel's Cottage at Guilford College, and it will be at the Charlotte Hawkins Brown Museum April 18th at the Greensboro Cultural Center for Greensboro Bound, on May 14th, and at the Commission on the Status of Women Equality Day on August 22nd. Well, you are all very busy this year, um, not only moving the roses around, but really talking about the significance of the yellow rose um, in that time. 
And so when I think about the suffrage movement, it really, change doesn't happen overnight. It took 30 years really to get to that place and what the climate was like for women um, without the ability to own property um, or be able to vote and really participate fully in democracy. So Kathleen, could you give us a little bit of a feel for what is the, what's the climate of that time? And as UNCG prepares their theme for this year, she can we can be on the suffrage movement. Can you talk a little about what role UNCG played in the suffrage movement? Absolutely. You know, suffrage, women's suffrage had been on the table since the late 19th century. And um, it was really take, taking root, um, I know, at our school, which was opened in 1892 as the state normal and industrial college. Um, and really as early as 1914, we are seeing um, the mention of suffrage in our campus publications. Uh, the young women were very interested in it, as was our faculty. So what was interesting about our school, besides it being a state school as, op as opposed to some of the private women's colleges around the state, was that they really made a push to hire faculty from um, outside the region. And that was really important because the students were able to hear the voices of women who um, were bringing different ideas to the table. They were not hearing some of these ideas um, at their dinner table or in their church pulpit. Uh, it was very different. Harriet Elliott, who I always talk about, um, uh, was very instrumental in this. She was originally from um, uh, Carbondale, Illinois, had been educated in Indiana, went to Columbia to get her master's, and she came down, and and um, she really encouraged the students to, to be empowered, to stand up for what they thought. So um, I think it's hard to talk about suffrage without kind of talking about World War I. Um, although suffrage was uh, certainly a consideration, women were asked to kind of put that on a back burner um, when they were mobilizing for war. So war breaks out April 1917, and um, the women are expected to start to mobilize for war, and they do. And we had quite a bit of mobilization on our campus, um, headed by women like Harriet Elliott, Minnie Lou Jamison, Anna Gove, faculty members like this. It really encouraged the students to, to help play a bigger part um, um, in their country's efforts at mobilization. And then afterwards, I think there was more of an expectation of, um, of the vote. I mean, women had proven themselves over and over again, but yet they couldn't vote. And so I think that that really pushed it ahead. But, um, as, as again, early as 1914, it appears in college uh, publications. Um, by 1915, our students were having um, marches up and down College Avenue, mm -hmm. playing makeshift instruments, having uh, giving speeches. Uh, they were, and they were, they were not kidding. I mean, when Governor Locke Craig came to speak at commencement in 1915, and um, unfortunately mentioned something about um, women really not needing the vote, uh, he got a very icy reception. And uh, the same year, another legislator came and gave a speech. And the students were so mad at his views on women's right to vote, uh, they made an effigy of him and burned him in the park in front of the main building. So um, these were certainly <laughs> not shrinking <laughs> yeah. violets. Um, they were very serious. Mm -hmm. And um, they continued to be after the war ended. Mm -hmm. um, in 1918, they, they uh, had a petition um, signing initiative where um, most of the women on campus signed a petition to send to the senators um, in favor of uh, women's suffrage. So we were quite active. And we know that it was a nonviolent protest, but it didn't mean that women weren't, um, you know, persecuted in other ways for stepping out and speaking up, especially in a time of war and trying to demand what their right could be while we were hopefully freeing those across the seas. So it's really interesting um, sort of just your position on, on how we think about this. So, um, and we know that Harriet Elliott was a great example, or is a great example for UNCG, but there were suffragettes really across Greensboro's colleges, universities, and that's something that the league is um, highlighting this year, the, the many women from Bennett College to Salem College that also participated in the movement. Yes, and um, each co we've asked each college to come up with their suffrage woman. Who is it? And to include them in their events that they're planning, and they're planning an, an array of amazing events. But to speak about one, Greensboro College suffrage woman is Sally Southall Cotton. 
and they are having, they're bringing another Sally to come on April 22nd to speak, Dr. Sally Roche Wagner, who wrote the book, The Women's Suffrage Movement, and this is a copy of it. The, for, the foreword was written by Gloria Steinem, and they are planning a really big surprise uh, at the beginning of the event with a student being Sally Cotton. So it should be really um, yes. excellent. Mark Something your calendar. Mark our yes. For. Uh, Guilford College has, uh, their suffrage woman is Mary Mendenhall Hobbs. And, of course, we know about um, Harriet Elliott. And, of course, the League has a suffrage woman, uh, Gertrude Wheel, who was the woman who founded the League of Women Voters of North Carolina. A really amazing woman. Um, and we're very excited that she is being honored with as one of three women from the state of North Carolina from the Pomeroy Foundation with an historic marker. She stood on the steps of the Guilford County Courthouse October 2nd, 1920, and declared that we were formed. <laughs> so, yes, and so the marker is going to be placed in front of the, the old Guilford County Courthouse. So we're very excited about that as well. And we're proud again to have Harriet Elliott as our representative. She was an amazing woman. I loved one of the things that was said about her, the students. She was so encouraging of the students doing um, doing any kind of um, really activist work on campus. And they would say, Miss Elliott, come down and participate. And she said, well, I can't always participate, but I'll, I'll be, always be watching you from the window. And she was. And she followed her students even after they graduated and encouraged them. But she also had relationships um, with other important women. Um, Anna Howard Shaw was a personal friend of hers. She came to speak at the campus three times, right? Once, really the last time right before she died. Um, women like Jeanette Rankin, the first woman um, elected to Congress, also um, was a friend of hers and came through town and spoke to our students. So, um, really, And President really Roosevelt amazing. later... Yeah. Put right. her on an advisory. Right, committee. that was World War II. Mm -hmm. Franklin, she was friends with both Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, and they included her in um, war work for World War II. And, and then so. the Secretary of the Navy also had her uh, involved as creating the waves. Hmm. Yep, she was she was really an amazing woman. We're we're yeah. proud to have her as our representative this year. Well, rightfully so, and I think Greensboro is lucky to have this. Um, history in our community, whether it be for the Revolutionary War, to our role in the Civil Rights Movement, to the role in the Suffrage Movement, how um, sort of the fabric of freedom is really um, throughout this community and through our history. So I want to ask you, as we kind of wrap up this podcast, what you, maybe a woman that you think is making history now, or what you believe uh, women will be known for um, in 100 years in 2020. Oh, you want me to start? Okay. It can be. Uh, you go. Okay. Well, um, you know, I think we're we're in a really interesting time in history for, for women's le leadership. Um, during the last election, I think we had more women run for office than ever we had before, which is really amazing. And I think it's a really good fit, women in leadership. I mean, I think um, they bring, um, you know, communication, compassion, accountability um, to their offices, which I think is, is really important. And... Um, I think that, that we are just on the precipice of really finding our true voice in, in politics. I, I think my person would probably be Congresswoman Alma Adams, mm -hmm. who was the 100th woman in Congress. Um, she has 30 years of experience in working here in Greensboro on city council and so forth. And I was fortunate to meet her registering students years ago mm -hmm. and became a uh, I admire her greatly. Um, I asked a couple of students at UNCG, you know, what they were thinking about in the future. And it was very interesting that they talked about advancing gender equality, that it needed to be done on the professional level and on the personal level. A group of African-American students said to me, um, boys will be boys can no longer be a phrase. And it was very interesting to, to see that they have risen in their professionalism mm -hmm. and they are not willing to let, you know, men be men. Mm -hmm. So that was very interesting. And then I spoke to a student who's an exchange student and I asked her what her concerns were. 
And she said that gender balance over family life. Mm. She said we're achieving a lot in the in our professions, but then we come home and we take over the house and the kids and all of that, and it's it's stressing us tremendously. So our future vision would be that the men would pick up the kids if they're sick at school and that the men would have the food and everything washed when she came home. Well, we've certainly made progress um, since uh, 100 years ago, but we still have work to do. And I'm grateful that both of you are in the role that you are to teach us about history and hold us tight to that and um, moving us forward in the work that the women um, do through League of Women Voters. Um, we've got an important year coming up. and. I think we, through this conversation, have also lifted up the intellectual capital and the dynamic um, components that our higher education institutions bring to this community. Yes. Um, sometimes we think of them in uh, purely of um, teaching students to prepare for the workforce, but we forget sometimes the the ability that education brings to our students and to our faculty to really make lasting change in our community. And I know we're grateful for the work of the women in the suffrage movement to get us where we are today. Well, for those of um, our, our listeners that are interested in learning more um, and, and gaining more information, attending events this year in Greensboro, can you both tell us about what's going on um, in the next couple months? Yes. Uh, I wanted to talk about Salem College. Even though that's Winston-Salem, we think of it as the triad, so I'd like to speak mm -hmm. about that. They are having a juried art exhibit. It's called 100 in 2020. Musings of Women and Voting Rights, and it should be very, very exciting, and it goes on through April 25th, and there are 29 artists who are included in the show, and I have a painting in the show. Oh, I'm very excited you. about that. Yes. I wanted to just mention a few women's organizations that have been involved with what the League is doing, like the American Association of University Women, AAUW, is presenting an original play called Sister of Mine, which will be at the Triad stage August 28th and 29th. So please try to go to see that. So we have art and we have plays happening. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we have um, a website that you can go to from the League. It's the League of Women Voters, PiedmontTriad.org. And go there and you'll find out about many more events because we have a calendar on Wonderful. the website. And our Twitter is women voting. I'm glad you got that one early. Yes. That's a good Twitter handle. <laughs> yes. All right, Kathleen, and, what's coming up? Um, well, as I said, UNCG is doing a wonderful She Can, We Can initiative, so there will be all kinds of programming in the coming year, both throughout the university, the library, and the archives. And if you would like to know more information on um, our college's involvement with the suffrage movement and Harriet Elliott, you can look on um, our, our blog, our archive blog, which is um, UNCG Spartan Stories. Wonderful. Well, there's lots coming up, and we know that we'll start seeing the yellow roses all over. Um, from an Action Greensboro perspective, we have yellow roses on the uh, downtown Greenway. So when you're there and you see your yellow roses in the community, you'll think about them in a new way. Maybe you'll tweet about them and, and tag the league and UNCG and Action Greensboro. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by True Lion Federal Credit Union a modern, mission-driven financial institution focused on the needs of its members, the businesses it serves, and our community. With five locations in Guilford County, including a dedicated commercial lending office at Friendly Center and a highly rated mobile banking app, Truliant makes it their business to help you grow yours. Visit truliant.org for more information. You can find all of our episodes on YouTube thanks to our video sponsor, North State. Impact the Borough is recorded at Press Play Studios Producers are Brody Cohen-Glaze and Holly West. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at GSO Chamber. See you next time.